Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and let's continue the series on JavaScript. Now in the earlier video we have talked about data types right and then the entire video we have spent on numbers. This time let's go with the other primitive types. So let's talk about string first. Now what is string? So whenever you want to store a text we will use string right example if you want to store your name. So what I will do here is I will say let and I just want to store a message. Now let's say what message maybe I will go with my name. So I will say Navin Reddy that's it. I know that's not a message but or maybe you can go with a username uh, that should work and then at the end here I will print the user now this is called a string this part okay so you are storing a data in a variable so the type of the data here is a string or you can say string literal because you're literally representing a string there I will just go back here and run so you can see we got Navin ready as it is now of course you can perform some operations on it maybe you can get the value you can get one character but again we'll, we'll talk about those in a separate video how can you fetch one character of a string let's say I want to fetch this V is it possible so we'll see that later as of now this is how you represent a string but can we mix two string maybe let's say I have a last name and a first name so let's say I will say first name is equal to Naveen and let's say my last name here is ready now in this case I can simply create a user by mixing these two words let's try so I will say first name oh how do I merge my two names maybe I can use first name last name that's what you do in real world right you give a space but since we want to merge them we want to concatenate these two strings I can use a plus operator I know you might be thinking hey plus is used for addition right uh, that's the issue here the plus operator is actually very smart it checks what is surrounding it is it numbers or is it string if it is string I will concatenate them if they are numbers I will add them smart right so I will just go back here and let's see what happens and if I run this code oh we got the output okay but the only problem is we don't have a space in between okay there's something we can solve this issue with the help of a plus sign so what we can do is we can have two plus so we can have first name concatenate with a space then concatenate with a last name and now let's try this so we got Navin ready with a space in between so we'll perform some more operation on string later as of now we just want to understand how string works right in fact here you know I just want one more thing we can actually perform some operations so let's let me just go back to the earlier username so here we can use some escape characters now why do we need them so let's say I also want to add a telesco at the end okay so Navin ready telesco now I want to have telesco in double quotes so can we do that I guess we have discussed that before if you want to use double quotes in your text in, because in, I, I want double quotes in the output as well in this case you can use a single quote at the start so you can use a single quote here and at the end as well you can use a single quote so that double quotes will have an impact in the output let's try and you can see we got Navin ready Telesco. okay but the problem is what if I have double quotes here at the start because maybe I also have a single quote in between so in that case you can't use any of it right so if you want to use double quotes and even if you have double quotes at the start and the end you can actually cancel the special meaning of these double quotes because see double quotes single quotes they have a special meaning we can cancel that with the help of a slash so just give a backslash and done so whichever double quote you want as an output just say backslash and it should work let's try so yeah it is working so you just have to say backslash and it will cancel the special meaning of it now this is called a escape character now this is not the only one we have we have so many characters available example let's say I want to print ready on a new line so I want to print Naveen and then I want to print ready on the new line so let me just remove this underscore for time being so that job is done so I can simply say slash n now slash n has a special meaning which is of new line so if I run this code you can see we got new line we can also use slash t for a tab so let's say I want to give a tab after no so n a tab and then win so in this case I can say slash t which is for tab and you can see we got no then space then win what if you want to have a vertical thing so I will say slash v which is which will give you a vertical tab so on a new line basically let's try oh it's not working here is it saved this is not working let me just try with some other character here <laughs> okay so this thing is not working on windows terminal so try this on your machine this is actually a vertical tab i'm not sure why it is not giving as a vertical tab so let me just use that here uh, it's not it's still not working so try this on your machine if you are using mac or linux 
it does behave properly i'm not sure maybe it's a power shell issue so try that with your bash shell or command shell or, or your terminal then we also have let's say i type extra d here you can give a slash b to delete that extra character so let me run this code and you can see we got only one d okay because it will remove it will give a backspace when you say slash b okay this is how a string works the next thing we can look at is boolean now boolean is either true or false Example, your computer can make proper decisions because of true and false, right? So let's say uh, we have a Boolean type, let's say bool equal to. So let's say I want to perform some operation here. I just want to check if five is greater than six. Is it true? Of course not, this is false, right? So how do we get the output? What we can do is we can print bool and let's say enter and you can see we got false. Uh, you can also try with less than symbol and you can see we got true. So this is how you perform the condition and it will only result in either true or false. That's a boolean values. In fact, you can also check the type of it. So you can say type of bool and it should print boolean. That's right, we got boolean type, right? So we have seen numbers, we have seen string and we have seen boolean. Again, we'll talk more about how do we compare stuff? How do you perform operations? Maybe you want to do some other operations. Maybe you want to compare two numbers, two strings. Uh, we'll see that later. Or maybe a string and a number. Okay, as of now, we just want to focus on true or false. So apart from this, we have null and undefined, right? Now, by chance, if you're coming from some other programming language, let's say Java, C, C++, we have a concept of null there, right? Which simply means it does not exist, right? Example, let's say if I have a name here, or maybe a user, and if I say user equal to null, you can see uh, it's a keyword basically, so null is a type. So basically, you know, when you talk about null, it represents something called empty or does not exist. But if you print user, see logically it should print null, right? And it is printing null. We don't have any value there. But if you print the type of it, we got object and that's weird, okay? You can call it as a bug or a feature which no one want to remove, but yeah, we got null. So if you want to convey that we don't have the object or we don't have a value, you can say null. But then to do that, especially in JavaScript, we have something called undefined. Example, if I don't define here, so if I say let user and let me only print user here. So what it will do is it will print undefined. And this makes much more sense, right? The variable is not defined. And the amazing part is the type is also, so if you print a type of undefined, it is undefined. So this makes much more sense to use. That depends which one you want to go for. Mostly we will be using undefined, but yeah, if you have an object and if you say don't use this object anymore, or clean this object, you can use null there. But the only thing is null represents an object. It says it is not an object. It doesn't represent an object, but it's an object. Okay, so once we start with comparing, we'll understand true difference between null and undefined. But as of now, we got this. There's one more thing I forgot to mention about numbers. What if I have a num here, and let's say five, I want to say console.log, and I want to perform some operation on five. So I'll say five divided by a string, let's say Naveen. What will happen? So if I run this code, you can see we got NAN, which is not a number. So NAN is not a number. But NAN type itself, for example, if I print type of this operation, so I want to know what this operation returns. If I run this code, we can see you got number. This is actually not a number, but the type is number. This is something which is confusing, but understand this. The output is NAN, which is not a number, but the type is a number, okay? So there's something you have to remember, mostly, for the interview purpose, but for programming, we don't actually focus much on this. It's not a number, you solve that and it should resolve. So that's it from data types in JavaScript. We'll focus more on uh, operations and other stuff in the upcoming videos. So I hope you enjoyed, let me in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos. Bye-bye.